All right. Hey there, and welcome to today's episode where we're going to talk and continue our series on OCD and anxiety recovery. And today we're going to talk about how OCD recovery and anxiety recovery is not a destination that you reach, but more a direction that you head in. And uh, contextualizing it this way is really helpful to, uh, you know, really to make sure that you're successful. Um, So before we dive into the show, please help us out by liking, subscribing, leaving a nice review on iTunes or Spotify uh, if you're joining us via podcast. <clears throat> and um, if you are looking for help and guidance, please check out the links in the notes. We have our book. You can apply for the TBC program. Uh, we have openings right now um, You know, at the time of this recording. So um, you can fill out an application. We can reach back out to you. Uh, so yeah, there's all sorts of ways we can help you. Um, please check those out if you are looking for help and guidance. Um, So with that said, let's uh, hop back into the show. So a lot of people, when we are starting this journey, right, again, we're, we're not contextualizing the problem correctly, which then leads us to set uh, poor expectations or poor goals on what we expect to happen and how we define recovery. So if we're defining, if we falsely define the problem as an intrusive thought problem or an anxiety problem, a thought or feeling problem then our definition of recovery is naturally going to be, well, the absence of thoughts and feelings. But again, when we recontextualize and understand the problem as a loop problem, what recovery is, is breaking the loop. Now, how we break the loop, again, is not engaging in behaviors. And the best way that I know to do that is by the AAA response. So with, with that being said, a lot of people, even after they hear something like this, come into TBC, you don't want to work with me or other coaches at Restored Minds. And they're still kind of set on this. My my recovery is a destination and recovery is this place that I reach when I don't have any thoughts and feelings. And that's the, the only time that that happens is when you pass away, right? And that's not what recovery is, right? So we need to really like you know separate that so the only time you're not feeling anything in your body is yeah when you've when you've transitioned out of this life when you've died right the only time you're not you know your mind's not ever thinking right i mean your mind can reach states of stillness it sure can right but it doesn't that's not a reform of recovery so a lot of people are are set like recovery is this mythological destination and i'm going to reach it and i'm going to put the tools into practice to get to that destination But it's much more helpful, much more fruitful, and much more accurate, I should say, to understand that recovery is a direction you move in. It's a progressive uphill kind of just incline. And you something that you get better and better and better at practicing. Because recovery, really what recovery is, is the absence of compulsions, the absence of safety behaviors, both mental and physical. And if we can truly get to the place where we have no safety behaviors, that loop can't exist. And if that loop doesn't exist, well, then the OCD and anxiety loop, right, essentially is dissolved. Now, that's easier said than done in some cases. And, you know, while it sounds, um, you know, quote unquote simple, it's not necessarily like easy to do because there's a lot of building and breaking and rebuilding that we need to do, right? First thing that we need to be able to do is handle and, and understand thought, understand consciousness, you know, understand how to successfully, you know, not resist and release emotion from the body, release energy from the body, and ultimately break beliefs that the whole thing is predicated upon. So there's work to be done. And that's why if we understand that recovery is a direction as opposed to a destination, as long as we're moving in the direction, we can rest assured that we are going to continuously improve. And and we got to stop having a black and white idea on recovery. And, and a lot of times we're bringing these false beliefs about recovery into the practice, into the, um, of the practice that we're adopting. And it, it paradoxically hurts us, right? Because Every day, a person will wake up and say, well, am I having thoughts right now? Oh, I am. See, I'm not recovered. Oh, am I having feelings right now? Oh, I am. I'm not recovered. And they're not judging the problem or the solution correctly. Where really, it's kind of like, okay, how, like, how, how much time did I spend on safety behaviors today? 
Like that's an amazing question to start with on this journey, you know, because at least you're getting, at least you're shifting your awareness to what the actual problem is. Or I should say like focusing on the part of the loop that you can control and really understanding this is a loop of problem. But, but so many people, as soon as they wake up, am I having intrusive thoughts? Oh God, there it is. It's going to be a bad day. Oh, there's anxiety. Oh, it's a bad day. Right. And starting to get resistant and then immediately start doing behaviors without even realizing it. So when you, when you see recovery as a direction and you and if you know you're moving in that direction, you can trust the process more. When you see it as a destination, I'm going to, I'm going to just going to tell you, there's no there's no place in the future where recovery exists. And that's the the chase that so many people get caught in, right? That's the whole have do be paradigm. Once I have no thoughts and feelings, then I'll be able to do the things I want to do and be the person I want to become, right? And you just chase that, right? That's the same thing people chase with relationships and money and sex and power and all this other stuff that people chase in in their pursuit to try to be okay internally and it's a it's a setup for addiction it's a setup for slavery right that's that's what that is um you know what mental slavery emotional slavery you know whatever whatever that is so understanding that recovery is a direction that we move in right that that often is completely opposite of what we've been doing and then we understand that the more we move in that direction and the more comfortable we get moving in that direction just results will follow and it's not that you necessarily will have the absence of feelings but you will have the confidence and competence to know what to do with them same with thoughts right? You become more competent to be able to handle the situation as opposed to trying to get rid of it. And you handle it in a very healthy way where it's a very temporary experience because you're non-resistant. And if you get what I'm saying here, if you don't get what I'm saying here, that's okay, right? That just might not be where you are in your journey. And that's, that's totally okay. But my hope is, is especially if you're, if you're experiencing this and, and whether you've experienced for a short time or a long time, my hope is, is you, you kind of know that at this point, safety behaviors, compulsions aren't the answer. It may make me feel better temporarily, um, but it's not the long-term solution to this problem. In fact, it's going to make the problem worse over time because the problem's the loop. Whereas if we start moving in a different direction, sometimes that seems very, very counterintuitive. I'll, I'll, I'll add that. What, what happens is, is we begin to work at this problem completely differently. And as we move in that direction over time, what happens is, is we, we reach higher levels of consciousness or higher levels of energy, whatever you, whatever wording you like. And from, it's, it's much easier to handle fear from a place of neutrality, right? From a place of acceptance than it is to try to handle it from like the energy of fear itself. And this is why as you move in that direction, you're going to see the tools make much more sense about what we're actually doing here and and more importantly, are going to be much more fruitful for you on your journey. So I hope this was helpful. And, and again, just the very simple message of this um, episode is just recovery is not a destination. It's a direction. And it's just asking yourself each and every day, what direction am I heading in? You know, and so um, with that said, I will be continuing this series here as we talk about OCD and anxiety recovery, and I'm going to just be talking about a variety of topics as well as different um, forms of and subtypes of OCD as well. But I, I want to kind of cover some some higher principles here uh, just to, to really make sure that we understand that. So I uh, hope that was helpful. I wish you guys a great week. And um, yeah, with that I said, I'll see you on the next episode. All right. Have a great day. Hey there. So if you enjoyed that video, we've linked up a few more videos that we think you'd find helpful as well. And if you have found this helpful, we'd really appreciate your support by liking and subscribing. And if you're looking for help and guidance, please check out restoredminds.com as we have several options for you to get started. See you guys soon.